let's um, let's start right why don't we just pray father we thank you lord for for this morning we thank you lord for the for the reality lord of your word lord your word is living powerful sharper than any two edged sword lord able to cut through father god whatever barriers there could be in the spirit realm lord your word is a weapon father god we thank you for the sword of the spirit the quickening word and this morning we choose to lord use the sword of the spirit you know just begin to just think about you know whatever challenges you might have and uh, what the spirit of god is quickening the word or the promise or the instruction that the spirit of god is quickening to your spirit to your heart and um, let's begin to just meditate on it and speak it out right uh, maybe it's something to do with some challenges some struggles that we might be going through maybe something to do with health maybe something to do with finances uh, maybe something to do with our emotions right you're feeling a little down and and what does the word of god say about that what does the word of god declare about that about you about your condition about your situation what does the word of god declare you know may this holy spirit quicken it to our hearts and uh, you speak it out right you declare it you declare the fact that you are seated with him that we are seated with him in the heavenly places in christ jesus you declare that we are being led in a triumphant procession in christ jesus we declare the fact that we are victorious in christ jesus we declare that we are clothed with the righteousness of god in christ jesus let's just begin to just speak that out and right? declare that out right? and uh, loud enough so you can hear just say i'm more than a conqueror in christ jesus and you know, i'm a new creation in christ jesus right the old has gone the new has come you know he made him who knew no sin to be sin for me that i might become the righteousness of god in christ jesus for oh, there's victory in the blood of jesus i just declare that father thank you thank you lord we thank you lord for the sword of the spirit we thank you that the sword of the spirit needs to be used employed in every day daily situations Lord, in circumstances, Lord, that seem to intimidate or bring us or force us down or oppress us down, God, we we rise up, we rise above, God, above these circumstances. We rise above these situations in our spirit, man, Lord, because you've caused us to be overcomers, Lord. You've caused us, you've made us, created us, oh God, to be people to hear your word, Father God, and walk in your word, Master. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, great is your power that is at work in us. You know, just begin to declare that. Great is the power. Great is the resurrection power of God that is at work in, in us. You just say, that is at work in me. There's resurrection power that is, work, that is at work in me. The same power that raised the Lord Jesus from the dead. You now, that resurrection power is at work in my spirit. Uh, according to the working of the holy spirit who indwells me so great is that power and lord we we ask today god lord you show forth your glory you manifest your glory let the chains be broken father god let the stone be rolled away let the mountains move in our lives father god yes master we thank you we thank you yeah you are the captain of the host you are the victorious one you are the one who goes before us and leads us in triumphant victory god we thank you we bless your name we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Okay, we've almost come to the end of uh, this course. Okay, we are uh, starting with our last chapter, <clears throat> which is on stewardship. And also some practical things that we can do with our finances. Okay? Some of the things that we can do with our finances. So... Um, so let's so uh, you know these these topics and these um, uh, this material has been adapted from the, the Christian Professionals uh, Financial Christian Financial Professionals Network, um, and you can check more of that. Um, okay, so uh, you know there are about fifteen topics. Um, some of us, some, you know, when we go through these things, um, because like most of us are students, so. Uh, maybe some of these things may not make so much sense, okay? 
um, but I just want to um, encourage us to pay attention to each of these so that when you come to you know situations of uh, let's say investing or even if it's uh, going to be in you know work or even you know this is talking about retirement because retirement is something that we don't think about now right? uh, it's it's not there but at some point in life we will come to that season right so we're just going to talk about a little bit about that um, and so on right so uh, so that's the that, that's the general plan for this uh, section. Okay, let's talk about stewardship. Okay, the first one. Now let me share the notes, class. Okay. Okay. So, so what do you mean by a steward? Anyone? What is meant by stewardship? What is meant by a steward? Any any thoughts? Steward, have you over used this word ever? Okay. Um, uh, well, actually, a uh, steward is basically, uh, simply put, is an overseer. Okay, someone who's like a manager. Okay. Uh, in uh, in a hotel, you will have someone who's managing the hotel. Any any place, any organization, you will see someone who is a overseer. Now, the, when we say steward, that means that person is not the owner, but who is an overseer, who is a manager. Okay? So something has been given to the steward that is not his or hers own, her own. Okay? So that is what it means. Okay? Something has been given, and that person has to manage it well. Okay? So managing it well would mean that person has to guard it, that person has to make sure that it is not wasted. The person also has to make sure that it's used well. And maybe there is even growth or multiplication okay, in, in terms of money. Suppose you know, something has been given. So it's not that person's money. That person has been given this money. But they're, not, they're supposed to, the steward is supposed to make sure that it is not wasted, that it is, it is not stolen. Right? So the person has to guard it. The steward has to make sure that it is used well and maybe invested so that there is return, so that there is growth. Okay. So one of the qualities of the steward that we see is that a steward should be faithful. Okay. Faithful in what has been entrusted. So that is what we see. You know, if you look at uh, Luke chapter 16, okay. Um, the, the Lord Jesus talks about a parable, Luke 16, and um, okay, it's a parable of the unjust steward. Okay, so we won't get into the details of it, and uh, you know uh, why did the Lord share this uh, parable and so on. But I just want us to go right down to um, verse 10. Okay, Luke 16 and verse 10, where the Lord talks about stewardship and he talks about the qualities that is required in a steward. Okay, so he says in verse 10, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. Okay, so that is another, that is a quality that we see. One is faithfulness of a steward. The second one we see is faithful in the least, meaning, you know, a faithful, a steward should not think, oh, I have only... 10 things that have been given to me, or maybe one thing that has been given to me. You know, I'll wait till I get 100. I'll wait till I get a 1,000 or a million. Then I'll be faithful. No, the Lord says, he who is faithful in the least will be, faith, will be faithful also in much. Which means that as a steward, you know, as, as believers in the Lord Jesus, as children of God, when God gives us, entrusts us something to take care of, he looks at us as stewards. He looks at us as his children. He looks at us as sons and daughters. But he also looks at us as stewards. You know, how is this person going to manage the things that I've given to him or to her? Okay, what I've put in his hand or her it could be material possessions. It could be talents. It could be time. It could be ability. Whatever, you know, resources basically. How is this person going to manage that? Handle that? Okay. So it says here, the Lord says, He who is faithful and just. 
uh, in least, sorry, is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Okay, so if I'm if I'm thinking that hey, this is just a few rupees, you know, I can do what I want with it, or you know, I, I can I can waste it or things like that, then the word of God is very clear. If if you're going to be if you're going to have that attitude about the few things that you have, you will carry it on in life when the bigger things come into your life also. So which means that needs alignment, that needs change. Okay. Okay. Then if you it goes to Verse 11, therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? So he's comparing between money and something that is of eternal value. Okay, true riches. And then verse 12, if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Okay, so that is that is another lesson that we learn. You know, there's someone else's. And they've given that to you for maybe safekeeping, maybe to manage it, maybe to you know, steward it well. If you have not been faithful in what is another person's, you know, how will you handle what is your own? Who will give you, Lord says, what is your own? So he, these are some things for us to keep in mind when it comes to biblical stewardship. Now, this is what the Lord requires of me as a steward, what has been given to me? You know, it could be time, resources, uh, abilities, talent, money, whatever it is. So that's the basic understanding of, you know, what I need to um, do with uh, all these things that is been interested to me. You know, if you look at um, the another uh, aspect of stewardship, okay, this is about the qualities or characteristics of a steward. If you go to Psalm 24 and verse one, it talks about uh, you know what the uh, who who the earth belongs to, the possessions of what is there. Who does it belong to? Like Psalm twenty four and verse one, it says, "The earth is the Lord's, and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For He has founded it upon the seas and established upon the." The psalmist says, "Declares, so this is the world belongs to Him." Everything in it belongs to him, right? So all the riches, all the material things, all the possessions, um, it belongs to him. Right? Another scripture that we can turn to is First Chronicles, and uh, First Chronicles chapter yeah twenty nine and verse ten. So the psalmist. Um, chapter twenty nine, okay, verse ten. So David. He praises God. Okay, this is what he says. Therefore, David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Okay. Um, yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who, who am I and who are your people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you, and of your and of your own we have given you. Okay? So this is the understanding, this is the reality, um, and this is the revelation that David received and is saying, God, all, it, it is, you know, he, he says this um, when, he, when he talks about the temple and and, uh, and all that, and um, so he's blessing God and he's saying, God, when we give also, what is it that we have brought? You have given us because everything belongs to you, and of your own do we come and offer to you. Right? So, as biblical uh, stewards, for us is to have the understanding that you know all that we all that we have, right, it actually rightfully belongs to Him. 
so which means that he has the authority he has the access that he has the right of way and and he has the authority to direct our finances direct our possessions right it is a very humbling thing to to you know, to come to that understanding right to come to that realization that lord all that i have is yours and uh, and uh, you know many times we because of our maybe ability to generate wealth you know in the right way right? because you know maybe god has given us the grace to do that sometimes we could come to that you know uh, come to that wrong conclusion that i am able to do this this is mine yeah it will it'll be in your name in the bank account of course you know if you bought something it is you know a vehicle or a land or whatever it is it is going to be in somebody's name but the fact is it's because of the grace of god right? this is been made available for us to steward it in the right way okay so that those are some things for us to keep in mind so um when you look at biblical stewardship you can explain it this way or define it this way it's the use of god given resources for the accomplishment of god's objectives god given objectives okay so um so you think of it that way you know many many times when we think of money we are thinking of uh, you know our how do i pay, pay our, my bills right how do i pay my bills how do i you know meet my expenses we it is mostly focused towards us you know? uh, and and there's nothing wrong in that because it is to be used it is to be used for our food and shelter and clothing and etc but over and bigger than that is the uh, is the understanding that god owns it all that he owns it all and he has the right of way to direct our lives if we are willing you know it always comes like that right if we have a willing heart you now right in the in the wilderness when they made the you know tabernacle the lord very clearly says you know all those who want to give out of a willing heart you, you take these are all the materials that are required this is the design of the tabernacle but all those who are willing to give these these are things that are required but if we are willing or the giving out of a willing heart you take paul again you know we we studied it he says that in second corinthians 9 talks about how we ought to give okay? not out of compulsion not out of necessity god loves a cheerful giver so if we you know give if we come to that place of saying god this is all this is yours so what do you want me to do right how do you want me to live your life and believe me the lord will ensure that you be a vessel or you be a channel through which he can actually bless a lot of people a lot of people right um and he can make sure that finances pass through your hands right through whatever avenue maybe through your ministry through your business through your you know work in ensure that finances pass through your hands so that you know you can be his hands and you can be his body as you help of being a channel of blessing to others right one does does not have to be super rich in order to be a you know blessing to others you know it's just a timely need and uh, and it's a joy and a great contentment to be used by god in this manner right many times we think of okay i when we think of to be used by god lord i want to be used by you we're thinking of ministry we're thinking of you know sharing the gospel and yes there is central to it that's god's heart but god can use us in this manner also to bless other lives you know whether it's your work whether it's your skill and art craft that you have or you know the business acumen that you might have use it to be a blessing in the right places you know where god will direct and say okay uh, you know i and and we've heard so many testimonies right testimonies of people who are used by god i just want to share one one particular thing um and um yeah I, i'm not going to mention names here okay so uh, yeah because it's kind of sensitive information but to this person who uh, whom we know Uh, a very simple lady right simple lady who's used by god uneducated okay meaning not literate at all she doesn't know how to read 
doesn't know how to write um, and uh, doesn't know how what the numbers are even so so illiterate okay um, so she became a believer God saved her she was actually working in the fields um, she used to take this um, you know lunch for the people who are working in the fields and you should sell um, coming from a very traditional very staunch very orthodox kind of a family um, you know beliefs and so on but God saved her. She had a you know sovereign encounter with God, and she got saved. And God started using her. And she was so dedicated, and um, you know she was she was poor, right? She didn't have her own place. She was living out of a rental place, but God used her because she was very obedient. No matter what, you know, no matter what time in the day, what time in the night, uh, God would tell her, and she will go. Right? Sometimes it'll be the weather will be pouring rain. God will say, okay, you go to this village. You need to pray. She will go. So what happened was um, she knew the, the, the driver of the chief minister okay, of, uh, of a state, right? Because the driver, his wife was unwell and she prayed and um, she got healed. So the driver knew that this was a, you know, and the family came to the Lord. So, so the driver was actually the driver of the chief minister of that state. So. Um, so, so driver once uh, said, you know, I'm taking you to the CM and please pray for this person. Please pray for the CM. The CM has given permission to, because the CM is having a terrible health condition, not able to sleep. Uh, please come and pray. So she went. Now, all this is true because, uh, you know, we knew her, we know her. And uh, she explained, yeah, yeah, very simple person. So... She went, um, she went and prayed for the CM. And the CM was very taken aback. CM felt like, what? This is like a person who would work in my house, you know, work in the kitchen or, you know, uh, as a house help. Okay, pray. So she prayed. She prayed and then she came back. The next day, the CM calls her phone. CM, Chief Minister calls and says, uh, "Who are you? Right? And uh, you know how? How did you? You know, you, you prayed? Oh, oh, yeah. I forgot one detail. While she was praying for her, she had a word of knowledge about some puja that was done for the elections, right? For the elections, some yagna, something was done, and the kind of animals that were sacrificed. Okay, she's so she said, okay, this animal was sacrificed." What was sacrificed? A lion was sacrificed. Okay, and a lion is protected. You can't you can't hunt a lion, but because of the CM political power and all that, a lion was sacrificed in that yagna, right? So she said, oh, "This is the so." So the CM was taken aback. How how could you know this? No one else knows. Not even my closest. You know, no one else knows. But she said, "The Lord Jesus, I worship." He revealed, and this is what it is. And she came back. Right, the CM calls the next day to say, you know, I want to meet you. For the first time in so many years, I slept peacefully. I was able to sleep peacefully. Come. So she goes back, and uh, the CM just says, "Wait," and she brings a bag. And in that bag are bundles of cash. Okay. Now this lady, poor, she's barely finding it. You know, very difficult to. Meet the daily expenses, monthly rent, all that. She brings one bag full of cash and says, Okay, this is for you. Take it. And the lady said, I cannot take it. I cannot take it. Now, this is the Lord very clearly told me, I have to come and pray. So I cannot take it. So this woman was even taken aback. She was like, You know, there is probably lacks in this. And you look like someone who use who needs money, and you know, and you're refusing. So she was even more taken aback because she's used to people giving money or expecting money, expecting favor, right? She said, "No, I don't need the money. I don't want it." Right? And and the CEO was taken aback. And the thing is, you know, the reason I'm sharing this is if a person can be so dead to the material things in life, right? 
that you have a hold on money, but money does not have a hold on you. God will ensure that you be a blessing through uh, to many people, and He can ensure that He puts money in your hands so that you can serve the purposes of God. So, like this, many times when this lady, you know, God would say, "Okay, somebody would come and give," you know, because she has ministered and prayed, and the Lord would say, "You give the entire thing, entire thing. Okay, it'll be a huge amount, like maybe twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand. You know, for her, it would be a huge amount." The Lord would say, "You take the entire thing, and you give it." To you know, the next person who comes for prayer will be a you know poor person or whatever, and she'll say, "Okay, Lord, I'll do it." Right. So God will make sure if we are faithful, if money does not have a hold on us, if we are dead to it, right, dead to the flesh, God will make sure that we are being uh, used as stewards, right, for His glory, right. So that's something about biblical stewardship that God has or wants this for each one of us okay? that we come to such a place that yes it, we don't consider money to be bad but at, at the same time we ensure that that does not have a hold on us we use it right we use it for kingdom purposes we use it so that god is glorified we use it for whatever need there is personally for us and for others around us okay right okay the second thing that we see uh, is some some practical thing about planning with our finances okay financial planning so what is financial planning financial planning is allocation okay what is allocation you set aside or you put it in different categories different expenses or different heads of expense different reasons for use right allocation of limited financial resources to unlimited alternatives because the end you know there's no end to whatever you can use it for okay and is applicable to anyone uh, with an income or you know all resources are ultimately limited right so so that is the thing you know finish at financial planning so when money when we get a monthly income or when we get um, you know um, some god ensures that some money comes into our lives you know to plan for it okay so uh, so the question is is it okay to plan or should we not you know plan is it is it okay to plan in life, or should we just, you know, just go with the flow? What do you think? Is it spiritual enough to plan? Over overly, overly uh, planning is not to, required. To, uh, in a sense, like to be too stringent, or you know, to be so cautious and very careful on planning that is not required but bible definitely speaks about wisdom mm. in how you handle and how you plan and you know mm. think. right so not to be cautious stringent overly cautious okay okay um okay yes we need to plan right so the thing is, is God is a God of plan and purpose. Right? The Bible talks about how His plans endure till the end. Right. So the thing is that God is not against us planning. God, God is not. No, the Lord Jesus talks about that parable. Okay, if you want to build a tower, will you not sit and consider, right? What are the expenses? Or will you just start and then you realize that hey, I don't have enough to finish it, finish the project, finish this construction, right? So Definitely, you know, it's it's okay to plan. It's okay to think ahead. Planning is just thinking ahead, right? You're thinking ahead and you're saying, okay, when it comes to this, this date or this time or this place, I will do this. Okay. But the Bible also cautions us about you know planning in a certain way. Let's say we look at um, the book of James, right? Let's let's go there. Okay, so Okay, so James 4, <clears throat> James 4 and verse 13, okay. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is 
even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Okay, so many times we look at this verse and we say, okay, I'm not going to plan. You know, because how can I say, you know, I have to be there, I have to do this. And even in ministry, like we're saying, okay, well, let's see what God's will is. And then we don't plan ahead. But here, you know, it's very clear. If you look at verse 16, he says, but now you boast in your arrogance. See, this, this is the basic premise of their planning. What is it? They're boasting. Right? What is their heart condition? They are arrogant. Okay. So boasting, arrogance. It's not part of our planning, right? That is not the intent with which you plan. Okay. So what is it we're saying? Okay, today and tomorrow I will go there. No, it is foresight. You know, they're thinking ahead. But what is wrong in this situation is that there is boasting and there is arrogance. Okay. So what does James say? He's saying, you know, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, okay, then we will live and do this or that. So, you know. This doing this or that is again planning. We will live, we will do this, we will do that is again planning. But the only difference here is that there is no boasting, there is no arrogance, but you're involving God in the planning. God is involved. God is not, you know, you don't shut the door on God. God is, the Lord is very much part of our planning or it is spirit-led planning, right? So. So definitely, if we need to f plan for our finances, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to, you know, spend it in this way, invite God and say, okay, God, you know, you, you speak to my heart. If there's anything that, that I should not be doing, I should not be considering, you let me know if I'm being greedy, if I'm being covetous, you let me know, God. But, but Lord, this is, this is what, you know, I feel in my heart. This is what I feel, you know, when I look around, this is what I, I see the need is, and this is what, you know, thinking ahead, this is what I feel I should be doing. Uh, this is what I sense that I should be doing in maybe two years' time, three years' time, etc. So I want to put aside or keep aside some money towards that you know, financial planning. Okay. So, so that's the difference. So we need to understand. So planning is not bad. Planning is good. But we need to involve God in the process, involve the Lord in the process. Okay, and several scriptures we can we can look at. Uh, you know, again, considering that everything belongs to the Lord, that He is the owner of everything. He is the owner. Okay, okay so some practical things to consider. Okay, let's say if um, if you have an income okay, of whatever amount that you get, okay, that is your gross income. Um, let me, you know, the, the term gross means that it is um, tax is not taken away from it. It's the whole thing that we receive, right? So that's a gross income. So there could be a deduction of tax which goes towards the government for whatever, you know, if you come under that bracket, if you come under the taxable bracket. Okay. Is paying taxes okay or not? What do you think? Should we? No, the Corrupt, corrupt government, you know, how will they uh, manage the money? You know, they're all they're not doing anything good. Road, look at the road, electricity doesn't come, all that. You know. So there's no reason. We can't give reasons like that for uh, you know not paying taxes. You know, the Lord Himself said, What did he tell Peter? He said, Peter, you know, whose inscription is this? The coin, you know. Uh, and he and he said, Okay, you go do this and pay whatever is required. For you and for me, you know, this is more than enough to cover that, right? So, um, yeah. So the Lord, when the people came and asked the query, is it okay to pay, pay taxes? And He took the coin, showed the inscription, and said, you know, you pay unto Caesar, render unto Caesar what belongs to. Him, right? So we need to pay people who need to pay taxes. You know, yes, there are different ways by which we can, and the government itself gives us um, what we can call as subsidies or gives us some benefits um, to reduce the tax, right? If we would save in some things, we could reduce the tax. But paying taxes is something that we cannot escape, OK? So sometimes we think, OK, I'm, I'm a man of God. I'm in the ministry. Uh, why should I pay tax? No, that's not correct, 
or you know in our ministry we should make sure the accounts are proper we should make sure that everything that is needs to be paid for according to the law of the land needs to be done okay so okay so you get gross income then out of that you have a tithe out of that you pay the tax okay so you know this could be the possible you know the table that you see down uh, you know i'm sure most of you would be how many of you could be doing this but uh, yeah just for us to go through it so we are uh, post you know or after taxes after the tithe we have the next net sorry net spendable income okay in that they normally say that one third of it is used for your housing okay house which means that if you don't live in your own house it will go towards rent or maybe you know even if you are paying some kind of a emi one third of it goes towards your housing okay so this is based on the financial experts now this, i know that this could vary from place to place like from a city to a village to a different country and maybe some of uh, e learning students could be watching you know from a different country so in your country or whatever you know these things could vary okay so just be mindful of that this is just a simple template or a pattern so these could be the um, several heads of uh, of expenditure okay so housing we need to spend some money food we need to spend some money auto meaning you know your um, on your vehicle by car travel whatever there could be an insurance debt what does that mean that means if there is some kind of a loan okay so debt maybe some leisure some entertainment recreation clothing uh, there's savings there's medical expenses some miscellaneous and if you you know if you're married and have children there's school expenditure and so on and and investments okay so um i think all this should add up to 100% okay um yeah so the thing is that many times we don't know see um the lord says okay your left hand should not know what your right hand is giving <laughs> okay so meaning that you know you you give generously um, don't be too analytical about it etc but the fact is that we don't know what is coming we don't know how it is going right sometimes we think oh, man i had so much money beginning of the month i don't know where it went okay i don't know how it got spent i don't know right and uh, that is because we have not actually made note of it okay? we have not recorded it uh what it's going to be used for and how we are going to use it etc so um so the the thing is this that once we start tracking okay so tracking the money means you make a record of it okay how much did you receive beginning of the month maybe for as students maybe there's someone who is you know sponsoring you so they might give some money to work with or maybe you are earning your own money whatever you know your parents give family gives some money um this through some way or somebody you know contributes gives so you some way you give some money you get some money right so how do you what do you do with it you track it okay today i spent now tracking is very painful right it's very painful that you need to you know keep a record of it every now and then and and right now we actually have uh, i don't know I, I, i'm sure there are some apps for spending right on your smartphone you can actually download the app and you can use it um so you track it okay so the thing is that um, when we track it then we begin to understand okay how much and where am i spending and where can i make changes right where can i make ch changes to my lifestyle okay see I, i don't have to order from swiggy all the time right so that's the thing no many times we just oh i just swiggy or zomato i just feel like I just feel like having a dialog or i feel like doing that you know uh, and we order so so this would actually help us very early in life to have a have a you know a, a track of what we are spending to you know it's it's not that we don't want to spend okay, many times when we track down right we feel that okay 
this is like one kanju's guy you know he's not doesn't want to spend anything he's just so tight fisted no it's not for that it's so that it's a discipline so you know where you you're spending and where you can make changes just think about it right at the end of the month if you if you look at it and say okay hey you know i've i've spent here and i think this is wasteful maybe i should just shift it i should i can actually make some changes here okay so yeah so it is uh, you know just for us to give an understanding the thing is it might be small when we start off with okay i remember when when i first you know uh, uh, we got married as here in bangalore um just one, one and i was just earn, i was earning and then um so i, I won't say that we had um i mean it was very uh, less money to be to be living in a place like bangalore okay so i won't say that our expenses were not met but it was tight right so we had one policy so what we would do is have envelopes covers right those days it was there's no upi no online transfer you know you put the money in the bank go withdraw the whole thing right take it and put it in different covers different envelopes right okay this goes towards the rent this is towards the milk this is towards electricity this is towards whatever other things you know grocery and vegetables this is for the gas cylinder put it in you know several covers this is for the petrol and all that and take it only you know take that cover and use it something like that it helped right it helped for a long time we use that over and over again and then you know all this online transfer and everything came and then messed up our discipline okay so now you know it's an excel sheet that we can use right okay so this is something that all of us can try out okay. where am i spending what you know once you start once you finish and you move out of here and you start you know handling your own finances and all that this will come in handy okay okay uh, let's look at five basic principles of basic guidelines for financial success okay five basic things and this might seem very very simple but it is difficult to actually apply okay implement the first thing is spend less than you earn okay so it's very very logical okay so the question is can i spend more than i earn yes how yeah exactly right you can use credit cards you can borrow you can take loans and now things are very very dangerous right dangerously easy to get loans right it's it's so dangerous it's it messes up people's lives like off late very recently you know, i've seen i've come across like maybe three or four people whose lives were so messed up because of these easy loans easy loans in the sense it's not big money it's not 1 lakh 2 lakh or it is like 25000 30000 right so you you take like five loans like that it's already crossed 1 lakh right and the interest is too high and they will come they will come knock on your door right these are not uh, you know very um well mannered people they will come and they'll force and make sure that you pay up or you know whatever is there the stake so so that's the thing you know the danger is that we can actually end up spending more than we earn so be careful right okay we'll continue in the next class and um, yeah thank you god bless